Ladies and gentlemen, even in the polarizing times that we're living in, I think, or better yet, I know, that there is one thing that we can all agree on, and it is that big tech is a big problem. Like, seriously, and let's not get too rowdy in the comment section, but I think if you put two clashing personalities in a room together, they would agree about the problems of big tech. Big tech companies have so much influence over society that affects how we live our lives. It affects how we spend our money because big tech uses their influence to force us to waste money for the sake of their own growth and profit. And it just ain't right. And so I'm going to speak up on behalf of us, the people, and talk about 10 things that big tech is forcing you to waste your money on. And the first thing is dynamic pricing models. So one pricing model that is becoming increasingly popular amongst big tech companies is called dynamic pricing, which is when prices will fluctuate in real time depending on demands. And we've all dealt with this before. For example, when you look for an Uber, the price is gonna vary depending on the time of day and real-time demand. Or when you buy an airplane ticket, the price will fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis. And these pricing models are made possible because of big tech's algorithms and their massive amount of data. And now we're seeing these dynamic pricing models becoming increasingly popular in other industries, like various retail stores using digital price tags, Amazon changing its prices throughout the day, and even Wendy's announcing that it will test dynamic pricing in 2025. Dynamic pricing models make the price of things change in real time, which forces us to waste money for the sake of corporations trying to maximize their own profits. Now, the second thing is planned obsolescence. Another sneaky thing that big tech does to get us to waste money is through something called planned obsolescence, which is making products obsolete so they require frequent replacements. And perhaps the best example of this happened in 2017, where after an iPhone update, older iPhone versions started to slow down, forcing people to buy the newest version. Apple slowed down their old phones to try to get people to buy new phones, and upon criticism, Apple responded saying that they were trying to improve battery health. However, in 2020, in a class action lawsuit, Apple reached a settlement and agreed to pay between $310 to $500 million. Sounds like it wasn't an accident to me, but planned obsolescence is another example of big tech using its influence to force you to waste money to buy more of their products. Now, as we're talking about all these changes that are occurring because of big tech, now more than ever, it's important to protect yourself in this digital age, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Aura. As tech becomes more and more part of our lives, it's becoming more and more important to protect yourself in this digital world because the odds of falling victim to an online crime are one in four. And a huge reason for this is because data brokers will collect your information, like your name, your phone number, and your family members, and sell it to various people who might want to target you, who then use that information to access your social media accounts, your bank accounts, and other sensitive information. But luckily, data brokers are required by law to remove your information from these lists when requested. However, they make it very hard to do, which is why you should let Aura handle it for you. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your information. It's submit opt-out requests on your behalf. And as I've been using them for the past few months, they have removed my name from 16 of these lists with seven in progress. And they continue to search the internet to find my names on various lists. But this is not all Aura does to protect your privacy. Aura is an all-in-one tool that monitors your credit score, gives you antivirus protection, a VPN to browse the internet securely, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more, all for one affordable price. 
which can help give you back your privacy in this digital world. And if you're like me and you want to protect yourself, click on the link in my description or go to Aura.com slash Austin Williams to get a two week free trial to test out this amazing tool. And in 2024, it is crucial to protect yourself. And so let Aura handle it for you. And thank you Aura for sponsoring this video. Now, the third thing that big tech forces you to waste your money on is unrepairable products. Now, it wasn't too long ago when you had something broken, like a zipper on your backpack, you could just go to a tailor to get it fixed. And this was beneficial because one, you only had to buy a new zipper and two, it created less waste. However, getting something fixed nowadays is nearly impossible because big tech tries very hard to make their products impossible to repair. For example, if you have a Google Pixel cell phone and want to do something as simple as replace the battery, you can't because you can't open the back. You can't even do something as simple as replace the battery in your phone nowadays because big tech would rather you waste your money buying a completely new cell phone so they can make more money. Now the fourth thing is closed ecosystems. Now I've said this before and it always triggers some people, but I think that Apple is the most obnoxious brand in the world. And one reason is because they put themselves alongside Albert Einstein, Gandhi, and Kermit the Frog. Apple, think different, self-proclaimed geniuses as they call themselves. But another reason I think they're so obnoxious is because they trap their customers in their closed ecosystem where you're limited to just their devices. You need special cords and you have special apps that only work between Apple devices. When you choose to be an Apple customer, and I'm not holding it against you if you are, but Apple makes you extremely committed to their products by trapping you in this ecosystem so you continue to buy their products no matter how ridiculous their prices are. Making you a customer for life, but you're still a genius that thinks different. Now the fifth thing is third party transaction fees. One thing that has really picked up in the last 10 years or so is having this third party that you have to go through to process the transactions whom you have to pay a fee to. For example, before, if you'd buy something like a concert ticket, you'd go to the box office and buy a ticket directly from the venue. However, now we have this third party involved in the middle whom you have to pay a transaction fee in order to get the ticket. And these transaction fees are huge. For example, if I was gonna buy a concert ticket for Pink on Ticketmaster, the fees are $50 per ticket. And these fees are everywhere. Another example is parking. Before you'd pay a guy at the front, but now you have to go through this app and pay a small fee. Big tech has created an app for everything so they could process all the transactions and collect a fee from each of these transactions, which is just a complete waste of money. Now the sixth thing is credit card transaction fees. Another transaction fee that companies like Visa and MasterCard force you to waste your money on are these hidden fees that you encounter whenever you buy something with a credit card. For example, if you buy a sandwich for $10 and pay in cash, you get the sandwich and the store gets your $10. However, if you pay with a Visa card before the store gets your money, Visa will charge 2% of the total transaction or 20 cents. And because businesses are trying to make a profit, they just raise their prices and pass that transaction fee off to the customer. And that can really add up over the course of a year. I mean, if you're paying an extra 2% on everything over a year, that can add up to almost $1,000. Big tech companies, or in this case, big credit card companies, have made us dependent on the usage of credit cards that we're forced to pay an extra 2% on all of our purchases for the sake of convenience. Now, the seventh thing is tipflation. Now, only about five years ago, the main people who would expect a tip were servers and bartenders, and some cashiers would have a little jar in front in case you wanted to put some change in it. However, just like everything else, big tech got its foot in the door and everybody got rid of these old style cash registers and got a clover or square cash register. 
In these tablet cash registers created by big tech, ask you to tip for just about everybody with a minimum tip amount of 20%. And now there's this expectation that you need to tip anybody that lifts a finger for you. And sure, you don't have to tip, but you're in a high pressure situation because you got the cashier, the person you came with, and the person behind you eyeballing what you're gonna tip. And if you don't tip anything, you feel like a jerk. Big Tech created this tipflation where nowadays everyone who lifts a finger for you now expects a tip. Now the eighth thing is scattered closed subscriptions. In the big tech run world, they don't want you to own anything, but they want you to subscribe to everything like software, movies, and books. In this subscription model isn't the most evil thing in the world, but as it becomes more and more competitive and there is more and more products, it becomes more and more scattered and more and more closed. For example, if you want to watch Stranger Things, you have to subscribe to Netflix for $15.49. If you want to watch The Last of Us, you have to subscribe to HBO Max for $15.99. Or if you want to watch Disney stuff, you have to subscribe to Disney for $13.99. If you just want to watch a handful of shows, you are probably going to have to subscribe to multiple platforms. And these scattered closed subscriptions force people to waste their money because they have to choose many different platforms to subscribe to. Now the next thing is cloud services. One thing I think is really going to pick up in the next decade or so is the movement of in-house digital storage to more cloud storage. Tech companies are going to force us to store all of our stuff on their cloud. And you can already see this happening now, where if you buy a Google Chromebook, there is very little storage capacity and there's this expectation of storing your stuff on their cloud. And it's just going to be an added expense that's going to add up very quickly. For example, Google charges about two cents per gigabyte to store on their cloud. If I were to store all my video content on their cloud, which is about a thousand gigabytes, it would cost me $20 a month. And it's this recurring fee that I'm gonna to have to continue to pay because big tech loves their fees. But I think in the near future, big tech is gonna force us to store all of our things on the cloud, creating more of a subscription model in order to use memory, causing people to waste a lot of money. Now, the final thing is mandatory participation. To summarize this video, the biggest thing that big tech forces you to waste your money on is to participate in their world. In the modern world, you have to have their devices and services in order to function. For example, you can't really live without your smartphone nowadays because parking is done through a smartphone or you have to go through their systems because that's the only way. Big tech has so much influence that we're forced to play by their rules. We're forced to participate in whatever they create, which causes us to waste a lot of money so that big tech can continue maximizing their profits year after year. And with that, muchas gracias. Que tengan un buen día. Nos vemos, chico. Pew.